Okay, we can start. <coughs> Good morning, uh, gentlemen. I'd like to acknowledge first the presence of <coughs> the Senate President, uh, Senate President uh, Tito Soto, and uh, my another distinguished colleague, Senator Greg Ronasan. Good morning, sir. Also, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons led by Monsignor. Secretary Delpin Lorenzana and uh, Secretary Ed Año of the DILG, <coughs> Director General uh, Alex, uh, Alex, good morning, General Carlito Galvez Jr., the AFP Chief of Staff, okay, uh, Yusek uh, David, of course, representing the Executive Secretary, Executive Director Manalastas, good morning, uh, from the CHR. Attorney Asalan, yeah, good morning and welcome. Of course, from the PNP, we well represented <coughs> Police Director General uh, Oscar Albayalde, well, good morning, and Director uh, Pimentel, good morning. From the DOJ, ASEC uh, Serio Yap II, and from DILG, uh, Florese, Yusik Florese, and Mr. Uh, Ariel Rodriguez. You're representing uh, the ICT. Oh, is that? The ICT. <laughs> okay, opening statement. <coughs> a, a person may <coughs> cause evil to others not only by his actions but by his inactions. And in either case, he is justly accountable to them for the injury. This quote from the renowned political and economic thinker John Stewart Mill best captures the rationale of today's public hearing, which seeks to amend Republic Act 9372, otherwise known as the Human Security Act of 2007. Indeed, this committee hearing is called to discuss several anti-terror bills referred to your Committee on Public Order and Dangerous Drugs. In consideration are the following. Senate Bill 1134, <coughs> authored by Senator Gordon. I will not read any more the, uh, the titles of the measures. Senate Bill 1396, authored by Senator Hunasan. Senate Bill 1715, authored by the Senate President. And Senate Bill 1956, authored by this representation. <coughs> we only need to look at the historical background <coughs> of the 11-year-old Human Security Act of 2007 to arouse our interest and look at a compelling need to amend what this representation may refer to as a dead letter law, and for good reason. <clears throat> for one, no person or organization has ever been prosecuted under the Human Security Act <clears throat> during the past 11 years. In fact, what may be considered as the first and only implementation of that act was the proscription of the Abu Sayyaf group as a terrorist organization by the Regional Trial Court in Isabella City, Basilan. We are thankful to the security officials for submitting to us their legislative proposals in this regard. <coughs> Having said that, we tweaked your draft measures in coordination with other jurisdictions, notably Australia, which is one of the most proactive countries in legislating counter terrorism measures. Since the 9-11 terror attack against the United States, Australia has already legis legislated 61 new anti-terror measures. <coughs> As lawmakers, we cannot in good conscience remain silent and do nothing about our primary law against terrorism, becoming nothing more than a useless piece of legislation. <coughs> we cannot have it buried in our archives instead of being a source of strength of our law enforcers to prevent, <coughs> respond to, and address the growing threat of terrorism. While an anti-terror law in itself cannot solve the problem of terrorism, <coughs> it is incumbent upon us to give the government and law enforcers the much-needed tool in dealing with the emerging threats of terrorism. We cannot allow this to continue. We must act now. <coughs> our inaction will make us equally accountable for every death, injury, and damage terrorists inflict on our country. With that, let us begin. 
Uh, I'd like to acknowledge also the presence of our National Security Advisor, General Speron. Thank you, June, for attending in spite of your condition. Anyway, ikaw ang proponent nitong legislative proposal. So, we'd like to hear from you. First, ang unang relevant question, <coughs> is there really a need to amend? You know, as I mentioned, there's a need, but why and what are the provisions that need to be amended? And we want to hear from you, being the stakeholders, the primary stakeholders of this measure. So, Del, go na mauna. Good morning. Thank you, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, to all the members of the uh, Committee of Public Order on Dangerous Drugs, uh, led, uh, led by Senator Popular Laxon, good morning, sir. On behalf of the uh, security sector, uh, let me thank you all, sir, for uh, inviting us here to uh, voice or to participate in the crafting of the Human, Sec the Human Security Act that we are going to amend. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, last August 29, during our uh, budget committee hearing at the House, I was asked by one legislator uh, representative, should I, if, if I would uh, recommend the extension of the uh, martial law in Mindanao? My reply was this, uh, I said, Mr. Chairman, Martial law should be the last option of the government. And I told them about uh, the need to uh, craft a law that will uh, address the terrorism. So I mentioned uh, the one that was made by Australia and all our neighboring countries here. They have very strict laws. So that, uh, sabi ko, hindi natin gagamitin ng martial law. Kung mayroon tayo magagamit, bibigyan natin ng kunting uh, teeth yung ating security agencies. So with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, rest, uh, I, I end my, my, my opening statement. Would you like to say something, uh, June? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, Mr. President, and uh, Senator Nassan, for this opportunity to be able to join you today. May I just say that uh, we are in full agreement with the, uh, with the chairperson on the matter of uh, having to amend our uh, Human Security Act, considering that uh, our neighboring countries have, in fact, uh, more stringent uh, rules and laws to counter terrorism. For example, in Australia, as the Honorable uh, Chairperson has said, by, a mere, by mere suspicion or belief, they could detain uh, suspects for, for as, uh, as long as seven days or more. In our country, uh, I, I don't know how this came about, that if uh, for, ma for our own martial law, we could only d detain uh, suspects for uh, three days. And I don't know why, uh, instead of uh, giving the enforcers or the law enforcers uh, some more leeway or capabilities, I don't know why the Human Security Act would penalize us for mistakes that we would probably commit at the high rate of 500,000 a month. So, a day, a day, just imagine, a day pala, yes, a day. And uh, considering that uh, my base pay then as, a, as an officer was something like 60,000, who would give me the 500, the 440,000 so that I could commit a mistake for one day. And so it is really b very timely that we go through this and uh, probably and come up with more stringent rules, but uh, just the same, be, be more careful about uh, our arrests. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair. Chief of Staff. Sir, sir, I will cite as an example on Isulan, Isulan incident, wherein uh, we captured already the, supposed to be the bomber, but because of a very, you know, very permissive law, uh, the bombers were able to to uh, to to be to be you know, to be uh, released from the detention. And uh, Isulan, when you say Isulan, it has uh, two successive uh, successive uh, bombings. And because of the, our limitations in holding the you know, suspected bombers, we have a, a belief that he is really a bomber. But because of the mere suspicion, cannot cannot make him detained. Uh, the you know, the uh, the law uh, really that uh, does not you know, does not uh, really help the the security and you know, security forces to really do the job. 
In some countries, when we have a, a, a chief of defense uh, meeting in Hawaii, they have, uh, they have a very more restrictive, uh, restrictive uh, policy, wherein they can detain, uh, they can detain uh, people in the institution 12 months, and it can be extended further if their suspicion becomes uh, factual. So with the, you know, with the SSA that we have, uh, we have a very, very, you know, very uh, permissive law that wherein it allows the, you know, the, the uh, bombers and the perpetrators to do, to do, do, to do their thing. And Isulan is a very exact example. A frank question. How much time do you need to detain a suspected terrorist to be able to efficiently and effectively conduct custodial investigation? Based on your experience, 30 days. 30 days should be enough. What's the basis for 30 days? Of course, later on, we'll hear from the uh, representative of CHR. No? 30 days. Why 30 days? Why not two months? Why not one week? Why not 14 days? I, I, I think in Australia, they're authorized to detain uh, for 14 days, Diva. Right? Anyway, please. For uh, Australia, sir, seven days can be seven days, sir, but it can be extended, sir. Uh, and then, sa nakita po namin sir, kasi sir, if uh, we were able to capture a very, you know, a very idolog uh, bomber, uh, mo more or less one week, sir, wala pa magkukuha sir nano. Then normally it will break in uh, the information, then the lead in will break in maybe on the second or third week. Uh, yung po sir ang ano sir namin, uh, based on our experience, if we we will have a hardcore terrorist. Definitely, it will not break in from one, one or two weeks. It will only, you know, it will only, uh, we will get the substantial information. Once we have already collected some, you know, some corroborating information, wherein we can pin down that he is really, uh, really, you know, really, talaga po siya na, talagang ano po siya. Senate President, Just a quick question there. Uh, seven days, Australia, seven days, extendable. Ano requirements nila na extension? Sir, uh, can I read the uh, answer? Uh, under the Commonwealth law, the maximum amount of time person can be preventively detained is 48 hours. Under state and territory laws, a person can be detained up to 14 days. And in po even in the com combination of the Commonwealth and the state territory preventive in detention regimes are applied, the maximum times a person can be preven preventively detained is 14 days. 14 days, Jose. You, you don't know of the justification on why they can be able to, they will be able to extend? Mr. Chairman, I was yes, able to talk to the um, Foreign Minister of Australia last year when we were talking about these laws. I think the, uh, what she said was, if there is a need for the security agencies to, uh, to, uh, to develop more the case against this uh, suspected terrorist, then they can request for extension. Pagkatapos po nung pitong araw, if they need more, then they will be uh, granted seven more days. Secretary Ad. Sir, uh, the 30 days is uh, actually enough time for the security, uh, the uh, security sector to conduct all intensive uh, investigation to uh, follow up the operations and be able to uh, do uh, uh, counter actions. Now, uh, in the moment, sir, it should be na ima maximize me 30 days. Eh. If, if, for example, you can already uh, you have neutralized already the plan and you can file charges, even less than 30 days, sir, is enough. But at least the 30 days will give the guarantee that the security forces can do its job uh, properly. We conduct follow-up operations to arrest the uh, the, uh, the, the co-conspirators. Yes. The others. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sir, it, it's not it's not, not only that, sir, but also to disrupt. Because, uh, normally, uh, terrorists uh, only act 
uh, uh, they sometimes they act uh, with a cell or yeah. they have different cells. The 30 days is also a preemptive measure wherein if there are also other conspirators that uh, will have a simultaneous uh, terrorist attack, that 30 days is a, a good dis disruptive, disruptive uh, period wherein we can, uh, we can get you know, counter actions, especially pa makuha natin sir, to prevent an imminent uh, yes, terrorist sir, sir. Uh, attack pa rin. Yes, sir. Kasi kung, kung ano, sir, na normally, sir, sa ngayon, sir, the, the, you know, the complexity of the, count, uh, the ter ter terrorism effort is uh, especially the ISIS, they, they can be a lone wolf or, or a pack of wolf, or maybe, ang ano, sir, natin, sir, is they can have yung uh, uh, what, we, what we call yung, sir, yung, 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 yung tetawag nating deception, wherein they will allow some cell to be, you know, to be, you know, to be caught, and then later the the greater one will, you know, will scot free, and they can, they can, you know, they can uh, perpetrate a, a bigger, you no, know, bigger, you no, know, sir. So this is, you know, this is a, uh, some sort of a uh, third days is a, a very uh, good period for us, for the security element, to really completely uh, disrupt and also to probably defeat the threat. So, 30 days is on the assumption na wala kayong prior intelligence or good intelligence before the arrest. Parang nagkabiglaan, no, wag nating sabihin na failure of intelligence, but you lack the necessary intelligence to preempt, to monitor. Kasi under the proposed measure, bibigyan din kayo ng enough leeway sa surveillance. No? Monitoring, wiretapping. Again, we'll hear from you later. I know you will uh, oppose all this, but uh, you're free to talk anyway and you are part of this uh, discussion so we'll hear from you your uh, <coughs> your opposition no? assume assume opposition to all these uh, proposals pero kung kompleto na kayong intelligence you won't be needing 30 days di ba uh, kasi kung nandiyan na lahat yung materials uh, sabihin na nating kulang lang yung intelligence on as to when uh, the attack would uh, would be would would uh, would be uh, conducted, di ba? Pero kung kompleto kompleto na kayo, you would be needing uh, 30 days actually, di ba? Is that a correct observation? Yeah. So, si Char, sige, ikaw na muna, hirit ka muna. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Um, we just have some issues for regarding for doing sa period of detention of 30 days. Um, I believe, uh, as, well as mentioned earlier, there were no um, court uh, order for the detention yet. Um, we just have some issues um, because we believe, um, al also under the device penal code, it was stated that the period of detention should only last for only 36 hours or three days. And uh, um, the period of detention for 30 days for a period of 30 days without a warrant or any valid ground, I think they will be having a problem with that. Uh, attorney, ang valid ground dito is warrantless arrest, di ba? A, a, an attack has just been committed or is actually being committed, di ba? Meron yan. Or about to be committed. So in arrest to, may valid ground for arresting. Ang pinag-usapan lang natin dito, yung regulatory period to, to detain. Yun lang ang issue rito. They're asking for 30 days for reasons already stated. Now, what is your opposition to having the person detained uh, for 30 days instead of the uh, usual 36 hours under the revised penal code? Because they, they will definitely need more time to you know, identify and possibly arrest on follow-up operations, yung mga cohorts, di ba? And that much, this early, the committee is willing to to uh, give to the uh, security officials, but of course we will hear your uh, your side. That's why uh, I, I called you uh, immediately after hearing uh, their their proposition. So, seven jurisdictions, sa France ka ano eh, parang martial law, masawal pa sa martial law ang uh, existing uh, anti-terrorist uh, act nila don na mere suspicion, pwedeng arrestuhan sa ka indefinite yata eh. Oh, ang detention. Because of their experience sa Paris attack. No? And dito, while uh, alam mo, medyo sabi natin isolated pa sa some parts of Mindanao, yung mga terrorist attacks, but we should not wait for these terrorists, especially kung foreign inspired, to attack Metro Manila. Then everything will be in chaos. And we, we, we wouldn't know where to go and what to do. So yun ang... Uh, 
yun ang primary consideration kung bakit uh, we're uh, willing to give them that much leeway. Uh, at any rate, uh, your, your investigator sa CHR? Uh, no, sir. Kung ikaw yung ilagay sa position nila, no, you're following up on a case, a very sensitive case na bordering on terror, no? terroristic activities. Ikaw ngayon tatanungin ko, would 36 hours be sufficient to prevent uh, possible imminent terrorist uh, or terroristic attacks? Um, I believe, sir, it's not sufficient. Po. That's the whole point. Anyway, uh, set aside na yung, yung uh, ground for arresting because susundin naman natin yung basic civil rights, eh, di ba? Hindi naman pwedeng mere suspicion uh, huhuliin mo kasi that would be very arbitrary. Pero kung solid yung basis for conducting the arrest, ang pinag-uusapan lamang yung sufficient time for them to conduct follow-up operations. So you yourself admit na kulang talaga yung 36 hours, especially kung terrorist ang pinag-uusapan natin. Kasi these are hardened, ano? yung hard to decor, tapos uh, ano ba, ISIS, talagang foreign inspired. And uh, sila rin, alam nila na pwede silang patayin yung kamag-anak nila, pamilya nila. So there's a softening up, quote-unquote, ano, without implying na merong uh, physical abuse. But alam nyo, yung technique din ng interrogation, meron yung tinatawag na may softening period eh. Medyo i-gain mo yung confidence, yung trust, so they will cooperate. So I think that's their point. PNP, kayo mas sanay dito eh. What can you say? Uh, Alex, ikaw muna uh, din uh, si Oka. Sir, uh, before uh, anything, sir, uh, I'd just like to inform the body, sir, that in the region, uh, uh, the Philippines has the weakest anti-terrorism law. Uh, while uh, in Singapore, in Indonesia, and Malaysia, which is much less affected by terrorism, the Philippines, which is the most affected country in the region, has the weakest law, and it it is now one of the reasons why we are attracting foreign terrorist fighters from uh, other countries, for as far as Syria and Iraq and Morocco and all others, because we have a very weak uh, Human Security Act. Um, the the law that problem of terrorism highlights the fact that we have a totally different security landscape while the revised penal code provides only 36 uh, yeah three days uh, 72 hours to detain when that law was passed there was no such problem as extremism or the type of threat that we are experiencing today. So therefore, uh, Mr. Chair, we are pushing really for the amendment of uh, the Human Security Act. And uh, in fact, uh, if I may just include, the 30 days should even be extendable if necessary. Uh, considering the investigation that we conduct does not only concern local or domestic networks, but international networks, which not only affect our country, but other countries. And it takes time for us to establish and coordinate with other foreign countries in a, uh, with regard to the network of this terrorism, which is no longer a domestic problem, but a, an international threat. Mr. Chair, thank you, sir. Without borders, you know. Yeah, after Chief MP, we'll hear from DOJ, yung legal opinion. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, with the threats of uh, <coughs> the global threat of terrorism confronting uh, our country, I think yes, this is today is the most opportune time to put into limelight the shortcomings of uh, the provisions of the Human Security Act so that we'll be able to craft a more effective anti terrorism law. One that law enforcement and the military would not have enormous difficulties in implementing, Your Honor. Yeah, just like what the Director Nigan said, I think uh, 
the Philippines has the most uh, or has the weakest law when it comes to the anti-terrorism, Your Honor. And let us not wait for another uh, Marawi incident before we <coughs> we uh, 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 we, we uh, revise the our, our secure our human security act, uh, Your Honor. Thank you. May we hear from legal, yung sa DOJ, legal opinion on, on the uh, issue at hand. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, um, good morning to the committee, uh, Honorable Chair uh, Senator Lacson, uh, Senator Hunasan, and Senate President uh, Soto. Um, the, the proposed bills, uh, especially the Human Security Act, is one of the priority bills of the Security, Justice, and Peace Cluster. It is also the priority bill of the current uh, Secretary of Justice, uh, Secretary Minardo Guevara. Um, as of today, um, we have not yet finalized our position paper, but allow me to uh, read our draft, um, which was uh, also reviewed by the OIC uh, Chief State Counsel, Pastor Benavides. Uh, in general, the proposed revisions to the Human Security Act, the uh, proposed bills on penalizing unlawful membership in terrorist organizations, and the proposed bill authorizing the president to exercise necessary powers to address emergency situations involving drugs and terrorism are within the purview of what is embodied in Article 2 on Declaration of Principles and State Policies of the 1987 Philippine Constitution, particularly Section 5 thereof, which promotes the maintenance of peace and order and protection of life, liberty, and property, and the promotion of the general welfare being essential for the enjoyment of all the people. We submit that it is within the power of the Congress to enact laws that's, that are for public good, so as to ensure public, the public of safe and peaceful living conditions at all times. However, we submit our, uh, some of our observation to the proposed bill. For Senate Bill Number 1134, we support the bill authorizing the President to exercise necessary and proper powers to address emergency situations involving drugs and terrorism within a limited period. We also support the proposal for the President to be able to appoint special prosecutors from the National prosecution service, especially to address complaints involving drugs and terrorism, as there are special task force that are already handling drugs and terrorism-related cases in the department. There is the task force on anti-illegal drugs, as well as the task force on terrorism and national security under Department Order Number 359. As for Senate Bill Number 1396, Although we support the bill declaring as unlawful the membership in any terrorist organization, we believe that the provisions thereof may be incorporated with the proposed revisions under Senate Bill Numbers 1715 and 1956, which already provide for the pros prescription process as well as the proposed revisions on the intended detention of the accused by the law enforcement personnel with the latter not incurring any criminal liability. As for Senate Bill Number 1715, uh, the inclusion of a new Section 3 on definition of terms, we uh, uh, proposed bill included a provision on definition of terms. So we do not interpose any objection to the additional provision. As to the imposition of death penalty for the crime of terrorism, the death penalty has been abolished as per Republic Act Number 9346. We maintain that the, that reclusion perpetua is the appropriate penalty considering the serious consequences of a terrorist attack. We suggest, however, that considering that terrorist acts fall under the heinous crimes, the same may be included in the proposed bill and the reinstatement of the death penalty. Inclusion of a new provision, Section 5, F on penalizing glorification of terrorism. We support the provision on penalizing glorification of terrorism. However, the elements of this of offense must be clear to ensure that there is no violation on the freedom of expression. 
Section 8 on Surveillance of suspect, Suspects and Interception. We noted that the provision empowers the Secretary of Justice to compel telecom and internet service providers to produce customer information and identification records including call and text data records of suspected persons as defined in the proposed bill. We believe that the Department of Information and Communications Technology or the National Telecommunications Commission, not the Department of Justice, should have the such powers being the relevant government agencies which has regular lot, regulatory powers over these telecom companies. As for Section 27 on uh, countering violent extremisms in social media, we suggest that the government agency mandated to provide relevant information on terrorism be designated as the central body which would disseminate information to be posted on social media accounts on, of the anti-terrorism council members to ensure uniformity on information that will be posted on this vehicle. Lastly, for the Senate Bill Number 1956, Section 9 on Foreign Terrorists, we noted that the mere attempt to travel is already being penalized in this provision. It may be difficult to establish the intention of the person whether he will be actually engaged or participate in the planning or pre preparing of the terrorist acts. So, Mr. Chair, this uh, uh, terrorism is a special case, so it should be treated differently from the other crimes which are contained in the revised penal code. So we are hoping to submit our final position paper on this matter and we will submit it to 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 the committee as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Asik Yap. <coughs> One main innovation, it's a proposed uh, measure, yung definition. Diba, before, sa under the Human Security Act, <coughs> may qualifier pa na kailan i-course mo pa yung government to give in to the demands, tapos uh, kailan pa mag-sow ng, uh, ng uh, widespread terror. We want to simplify na parang just the act of terrorism tapos meron kang intent to commit terrorist act is already a violation of the anti-terrorism act, di ba? Isn't that more practical and logical? Kasi it's very hard to prove uh, pagdating sa court na hindi mo naman kinuors yung gobyer gobyerno pero ang dami yung napatay na for, other, uh, for another purpose, di ba? Kasi masyadong delimiting yung uh, in order to coerce government eh to submit to your demands. Parang, uh, sa akin lang, yeah, at saka masyadong, ano, masyadong limitado yung sa purpose. So, instead of uh, dealing with uh, the other elements, uh, ako, I'm in agreement with you <coughs> na isimplify na lang natin yung intent, yung tinatawag sa na mga lawyers na yung mens rea, di ba? Yung Latin word, yung mental state, na kailangan voluntary uh, at saka nasa proper uh, mental state yung tao. Parang, parang murder, halimbawa, di ba? Yung intent to kill is there. That's sufficient. Di ba? Of course, there are other qualifying circumstances. Pero yung ganun kasimple lang, uh, intent to commit terrorist acts is already uh, punishable under this uh, measure. Another, siguro another innovation, yung sa surveillance. This is, this is ticklish enough Pero this is important, and we need to discuss this thoroughly <coughs> para rin uh, we can strike a balance between uh, protecting human rights, civil rights of individuals, <coughs> at saka yung, yung sa law enforcement naman. How can you accomplish your mission uh, more efficiently? <coughs> Under the law, di ba limited sa judicially declared <coughs> uh, terrorist groups, doon ka lang pwedeng mag, uh, mag-conduct ng electronic surveillance, di ba? Yung mga proscribed na, declared proscribed. E sa ngayon, as I mentioned in my opening statement, ang proscribed pa lang na group, Abu Sayyaf eh. So, hindi ka pwedeng mag-conduct ng, <coughs> ng wiretap, hindi ka pwedeng, even uh, with, a judicial, with a judicial authorization, hindi ka pwedeng mag-conduct ng surveillance on... Uh, groups, organizations, or terrorist individuals na hindi pa na-declare na proscribed, di ba, ng, ng, uh, ng, or judicially declared uh, proscribed. 
another stupid <coughs> uh, provision to the existing law. Ito, the written order of the CA may only be granted. Ex, ex parte, ah. Pero meron ditong proviso na, but the person being surveilled has the right to be informed. So, if you inform the person under surveillance, ano pa yung surveillance mo? <coughs> Di ba? So, so, ang isang innovation is not limit yung surveillance operation against judicially declared uh, uh, terrorist groups. Pwedeng suspected terrorists, based on, of course, intelligence and other factors, pwedeng i-conduct, provided they will secure a, a judicial uh, authorization from the competent courts. Nilower pa nga natin kasi before, under the existing law, Court of Appeals, eh, minsan ang hirap hagilapin din ng oh, makakuha ng access sa Court of Appeals. So, binaba natin na pati yung RTC pwedeng <coughs> magbigay uh, ng, just like sa RA 4200, hindi ba? Kukuha ka ng court order, pero obsolete na ngayon because napaka-limited din yung covered na, na crimes. Actually, mga antiquated na yung mga crimes doon, hindi na, na, hindi na nakukumit ngayon eh, doon sa 4200. Anyway, that's another matter because we are also sponsoring on the floor <coughs> yung uh, amendment sa anti-wartapping uh, law. So, any comment from against si HR? Pasensya ka, nag-iisa ka rito eh. Good afternoon. Good morning again, sir. Uh, yes, sir. I actually um, agree with your previous statement that there should be a balance between um, the, the interest and the security of the state and the right to privacy of a person under surveillance and I think that there should be a proper guidelines as to what um, data or records that should be gathered and not those that are... That will be properly spelled out. Yes, in, in fact, sa measure pa lang, sa proposed measure, naka-spell out na yun eh. <coughs> ano lang yung pupwede. At saka meron din penalty do sa excesses nung, ng law enforcement officers conducting the uh, wartap or surveillance in whatever form. May mga ano doon, may mga limits doon. Uh, period. Under the law, 30 days. Tapos extendable to another 30 days ba? Yes. Another 30 days. What we're proposing here is 90 days, di ba? Uh, then pwedeng kumuha extension from the uh, court for another 30 days, di ba? Why 90 days? Why not 30 days? Hindi pa ba sufficient yung information? Uh, assuming na electronic, ano, CGN. Hindi pa ba sufficient yung pig-uusapan la in, in that 30 day period para makagather kayo ng enough information? By the way, all the proceeds <coughs> na makukuha do sa judicially authorized uh, wiretapping can be used as evidence, di ba? Yun ang kaibahan. Kasi kung illegally wiretap, hindi mo pwedeng gamitin yan eh. Kasi parang fruit of the poisonous tree. So, why 90 days? Why not 30 days? Why not 60 days? Why not 45 days? Bakit 90 days? Justify. Anybody? Yeah. Thank you, Honor. Uh, sa surveillance, sir, we're referring to surveillance, sir. Yes, sir. Um, as experienced by the intelligence community, sir, uh, uh, these, ac these, the activities of the terrorist groups have no schedule. Uh, meaning, uh, they will do it uh, on, uh, whenever they decide to do it. So it doesn't mean uh, when co we're, we're covering a certain target that during a period of 60 days, they were talking about a specific operation which may be become liable for, for under the law. So we need to build up this information. Secondly, sir, a longer period of surveillance will allow us to uh, identify the, the, the network of the organization, including their international collect con connection. 30 days is too short, sir. In, in fact, uh, 90 days not even be sufficient uh, if it's really, if we really are working on an organization uh, that has both local and domestic connection. And also, sir, the, this group do not talk to, to each other every day. Uh, it's, it's, it's very un unpredictable. So if we need to protect our people, we need enough time to cover 
these targets to the chair. Mr. Chair. Senate President, recognize. Thank you. Um, in that particular issue, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, if we say 90 days or extendable by uh, another 30 days, young 90 days, it appears, it would appear that we are putting a limit to it. Uh, why don't we consider, um, all the committee consider the 30 days extendable for another 30, five, uh, 30 days with the proper justification and then silent. In other words, you can extend and you can extend and extend instead of limiting it, limiting it to 90 days. they silent na lang. If it's not in the law, then as long as you're justified, you can extend for another 30 days. Mm. So the way you proceed nito shall be deposited to the court, di ba? And nobody is authorized to divulge. And hindi pwedeng gamitin yung chismis, di ba? Yung nakalimit lang yung uh, pwedeng gamitin dito, do sa uh, related sa terroristic, terrorist uh, acts, ano? Uh, this is for the information of CHR. And another parang ano rito, safeguard, hindi sila pwedeng basta-basta mag-apply ng court order without the permission, a written authorization from the Anti-Terrorism Council. Yun ay isang feature sa bill. So more or less, meron ng uh, may filter na ito para bang hindi to open to abuse na maski sinong law enforcer mag-apply ng uh, judicial authorization to surveil, conduct surveillance. Kailan dadaan sila? Kukuha sila ng written authorization from the Anti-Terrorism Council. But before we leave the, the topic on the definition, are we all agreed na i-simplify natin yung definition? Na wala na yung qualifier? Yeah. Sige. Ano? Sir, uh, you, if you will see the, the tactics now of the ISIS, it, it does not uh, coerce the, you know, the, the government, but it, uh, it, you know, it, it gives instruction to even a single individual to to, you know, to create uh, devastating harm to civilian populace. And if, if, if we will, sir, we will, uh, uh, yung, sir, natin, may tayong tinatawag na yung sa ating definition, may mga marami, sir, tayong mga tinatawag nating mga elements. It will, ano, sir, it will not, ano, sir, yung katulad, sir, sa ISIS na ngayon, sir, na by merely, ano, sir, na talagang uh, they were convinced in social media that, it will, that they, will, they will attack a civilian, no, civilian targets. Uh, mawawala po tayo, sir, sa ano, sir. So we we recommend na talaga po nga na we we you know we we uh, uh, support yung ano sir na simplify natin po sir yung ano definition. Now how do you distinguish or how do you uh, conclude na s s a particular act is a terrorist act? We, did we discuss namin kanina ni ang, ang Senate ang President ano? What if a neighborhood tafi no nalasing paputong ng barrel nagso ng terror sa neighborhood? So, hindi mo pwede classify na terrorism yun. Kasi sira lang tuktok. Ang gusto niya lang magpasiklab doon sa barangay nila o doon sa sityo nila. Ano, maski wag sabihin na, na hindi nalasing. Trip niya lang na magpapaputok ng barrel. Okay, naghagis ng granada. Without the intent to sow or terror, or without the intent to commit terrorism, pero just the same, Medyo na-terrorize niya yung neighborhood. How do you treat that? I think that is where the ATC will come in uh, because they have the data, they have uh, the information, so it can easily be discerned if an act is being committed because of just pure lawlessness. Uh, yeah. Unlike, uh, yes, because the ATC... Will get, will I get your point. Yes. Para bang kailangan mayroong mga presidents, di ba? Now, why that individual should be charged with uh, violation of the anti-terrorism or anti-terrorist uh, act? No, kung wala naman siyang background or maski sa sa background investigation na ginawa, wala naman talaga siyang uh, prior ano sa mga sa terroristic activities. Then ordinary law will apply. Ordinary yung violation ng revised penal code. Uh, Mr. Yes, uh, Senator Nasan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, b before uh, we ask the others to for their inputs, uh, first of all, uh, le let me ask. This is procedural. No? 
um, Executive Director Manalastas. You are the representative of the Executive Secretary. Uh, may I correct my designation, sir? Yeah, uh, yes. I am the officer in charge of the Anti-Terrorism Council Program Management Center. Okay. So, on that assumption, we, we are assuming that the Anti-Terrorism Council still exists. Yes, sir. 100%, uh, okay. uh, sir. Uh, yes. No, don't worry. I'm not quite. Yes, sir. Oh. Um, uh, how has it met already? Has the Anti-Terrorism Council met? It is, it is meeting uh, regularly, sir, when it comes to conducting meeting. Uh, the schedule is every two months, unless there is uh, uh, an urgent matter to discuss. Uh, uh, we actually agenda the different topics to be discussed, depending on the importance and the relevance. Okay, I, I ask that question because in the light of the important amendments that are being proposed to the Human Security Act, uh, we are assuming, your committee is assuming, that the output of the Anti-Terrorism Council has been directed to first, uh, the legislative, and uh, if it is relevant, it is directed also to the judiciary. Uh, is that a correct assumption? Yes, sir. I if I may uh, apprise the uh, committee, sir, about the background of uh, one of the bills that uh, uh, have been uh, forwarded to this, the one is sponsored by the Senate President. It's actually the work of uh, anti-agency anti uh, Inter Inter efforts. Uh, we convened uh, uh, a couple of times in order to come up with uh, a revision of the uh, anti-terrorism law. Uh, duly represented by various agencies of the government, uh, even uh, civilian uh, sector, and uh, uh, there's also a human rights representative, the one from the uh, Human Rights uh, Committee of the Office of the President. Okay, I, I understand that. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may continue. I'm asking this because uh, I'm looking at how we are organized to combat terrorism. You know, uh, as ha has been said by the other resource persons, no? the weakness of the law has relegated us to a reactive mode. The purpose of the amendments is to give us a proactive stance. Okay. So uh, let me proceed with the permission of the chairman. So we are assuming that the Anti-Terrorism Council is the ultimate repository of all information, all government programs. No, interagency or otherwise related to terrorism. Is this a correct assumption? Um, sir, can I give the background of the composition uh, yeah, yeah, also? Go, go ahead. Uh, be go before I answer, sir. Uh, director, uh, I'm yes, not sir. Fine, no? uh, I'm just asking because I do not know. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the Anti Terrorism Council, sir, is composed of seven individuals. It is headed by the executive uh, secretary as the chairman. The uh, Secretary of Justice is the Vice Chairman. And of course, we have the Secretary of Interior and Local Government, National Defense, Finance, uh, the National Security Advisor. So these seven uh, individuals are composed the uh, uh, Anti-Terrorism Council. The records are, are of course, uh, especially on operational level and, uh, of course, also on strategic level, are being kept in the offices of the uh, various uh, uh, secretaries. Uh, like, for example, uh, uh, on matter of uh, intelligence, it's being kept uh, at the different offices. Okay, understand. Uh, while you were answering, I heard somebody say no. So, Sir, uh, Alex, yes, yes, I'd like to why? clarify, sir. Uh, yes, yes. The, the organization of the ATC, uh, as mentioned, sir, uh, uh, seven members, yes. Uh, the NICA is actually the secretariat, uh, so we are the ones running the, the meetings and uh, keeping records. And uh, the PMC, sir, is supposed to only, as program management, 
uh, monitor the progress of the different programs. Uh, so supposed to be said, the ATC should have had, for the, for the longest time, had laid down programs. This is one uh, area where the ATC have failed over the years, but which is now being corrected by the ATC. So during the last meeting, the ATC decided to lay down uh, a, the programs which will be uh, handled by the different departments who are members of the ATC. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm, I'm happy, Alex, that you're looking at this from that perspective. No? I'm asking these questions because this is an 11-year-old law. And uh, I'm not implying anything, that, but for the last so many years, uh, it is the information of your committee that the ATC has never met even once. Uh, yes, please. Uh, May, uh, June. Your Honor, uh, <coughs> since we came in, uh, the new administration, I remember uh, that I have attended probably uh, no less than uh, six meetings by the Anti-Terrorism Council. Admittedly, there are some organizational <laughs> reorganizations that we are doing, uh, redirecting uh, the trust of the uh, of the council, but definitely we are on top of the current situation. Like uh, we last meeting, we even talked about the Lamitan, uh, the Lamitan uh, bombing. Uh, June, before you continue, uh, 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 you are talking okay. about the present dispensation. Yes. Sir, yes. Okay. Yun lang ang kinaklaro ko, because before Secretary the president, uh, yes, yes, uh, yes, uh, I meets, meets the council. Yes, I understand. So, uh, so it's the secretariat is Nika. You have a council that is directing. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may continue. Uh, talking about the, the driver for all this is uh, our ability to manage uh, timely, accurate, and complete information. No? Uh, my next question, maybe Ed, no, you can answer this. No? Uh, are we harnessing, in terms of baseline data, the power of our front line, which is local government units, no? uh, because it is my contention that uh, to fight an idea like terrorism, you fight it with a better idea. No? And uh, you begin with, these are supposed to be basic services, but in the natural basic services, eh, right? No? You start with food, clothing, shelter, health, and education. Uh, from the information we have, Ed, no? Uh, June, uh, the most effective baseline data, frontline mechanism we have is local government. Kaya lang ang problema, naha-harness yan uh, tuwing election lang. No? Uh, we, we want to be able to apply it to a more serious effort like anti-terrorism. So, ma my question is, are we harnessing that power? Because the perception is when we deal with terrorism, ang lagi nating inuumang yung legally authorized armed groups, AFP, PNP, occasionally NBI, no? When in fact, Isulan, Marawi, whether it's natural or man-made, uh, ang frontline talaga, it's not a failure of intelligence, it's a failure normally of local government. But we should empower them para they can hold the line until we are able to deploy Rapid reaction agencies. Okay. Uh, Ed, uh, brief. Yes, sir. I agree, yeah. sir. In fact, just like the war on drugs, mm -hmm. we are empowering the local government officials, particularly at the level of the barangay. If uh, the Marawi crisis is a wake-up call, actually, to all of us, because that is a good example of a failure of governance, and as well as uh, the failure of cooperation from the level of the barangays. So. Now, the security sector, uh, we are already starting this uh, work on progress. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the conduct of executive course for justice, peace, and development, wherein we gathered all the mayors, battalion commanders, provincial directors, and city directors in three days in one area for them to craft a campaign plan to fight against the CPP and PA and preventing, counter, uh, preventing uh, violent extremism. And besides, uh, in the holistic uh, uh, approach to counter-terrorism, uh, 
ito po yung talagang babantayan natin eh, yung community, uh, the schools, the, uh, the detention centers, and then the, uh, the religious uh, leaders, the madrasa, the OFW, and the social media. So it has to be uh, addressed simultaneously. And sa community, this is where the, uh, the ILG will really have a major role to play, ensuring that they are in one in our campaign against terrorism. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that you are on top of it. No? I mean, you're in the front lines. Kami uh, rito, we can only assist and complement your efforts. No? Now, uh, two more questions. No? Uh, one is, when we say classification of terrorists, are we locked into the classification of, let's say, the U.S. or Australia, or do we have our own uh, peculiar uh, order of battle or target list in terms of classifying terrorists? Or, let's say, CPP and PNDF. Pag sinabi ng U.S. terrorists yan, do we, do we jump into the bandwagon, or do we have our own criteria for classifying terrorists? Yes. Uh, yes. Sir, uh, right, as mentioned earlier, sir, the, uh, the uh, proscription of a terrorist organization, ang CPP and PA lang. Uh, right now, sir, the ATC uh, is proposing uh, a similar initiative uh, that in the meantime that we have not proscribed them, that probably uh, we are proposing that an, uh, similar to the declaration of CPP and PA as a terrorist organization that an EO or proclamation be declared by the president to the ATC of different terrorist organizations wh which are here to be also proclaimed as a terrorist organization just uh, as a, a stopgap measure while uh, the judiciary has not resolved the declaration of the other terrorist organization, a prescription of other terrorist organization. This is through the ATC, sir, uh, assisted by the the Department of Justice. We are actually have actually filed for the prescription of the te this terrorist organization, sir. But it takes time. Oh, okay. Uh, well, I suppose that is resolved at the level of the Anti-Terrorist Council. No? Yes, sir. The, the confluence. Yes, sir. The tasking. Yes, sir. No. Uh, so that it can be translated into legislative action, a resolution in yes, the sir. judiciary or a certain clear policy direction yes, sir. that will impinge on the proposed amendments. Okay, which brings me to my last question. Okay. Uh, you, you know, the, the permanent battle, this is the old rule. Tiniente pa kami ni Senator Lacson. The permanent battle is fought. No, and I, I'm glad we are winning there in the hearts and minds of our people. Okay. In fact, I was going to ask, how do you deal with the, the dichotomy of one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter? Okay. Y you know, uh, Alex, I'll direct my questions to you na lang para you can answer one count. No? Ang problema talaga rito because terrorism does not recognize front lines. The battleground is so porous. In fact, the technological revolution it's very difficult for policymakers, including us, to understand and to manage. Yan ngayon ang hinaharness ng terorista, di ba? Uh, the rule is, information is neutral. No? Uh, the ICT, just take note, no? Uh, you protect what you have, you protect your transmission, and you protect the beneficiary, the recipient. What locates you in the ideological, political, or economic spectrum is how you use that information. Is that a correct assumption? And my last question is, how is our information management system, considering the hearts and minds ang pinag-uusapan, when we recognize, I hope you agree, that the first battleground is media. Communicating to the intended beneficiaries and the unwitting victims, no, the nature of the problem and the response of government. I, I, ang old rule is, uh, what is terrorism basically? The more lives that are lost, the more people die, the more property destroyed, the better. You know why? When you have the attention of Bija, 
then you have a platform to stand on and explain the nature of your struggle for freedom, equality, uh, to protect the oppressed, the victims of injustice. Okay? So ju just give your committee, please, a, a brief uh, background of how we are responding to this first battleground. Uh, sir, uh, I have here a copy of the draft resolution of the ATC, which uh, defines the new programs that the ATC will follow. And if I may just mention, uh, the uh, Preventing Countering Violent Extremism program or the NAP CBE will be led by the DILG. The Counterterrorism Operational Readiness Program will be the DND. Legal Affairs will be the DOJ. Terrorism Financing will be Anti-Money Laundering, International Affairs, DFA. Now, on the ideological, sir, uh, may I just state, uh, it takes, you know, there's a saying, it takes a diamond to cut a diamond. In the same manner, it takes religion to counter religion. The, the ideology of the ISIS, sir, is based on religion. And so, therefore, the, our proposed program on the NAPCB, or National Action Plan, will uh, rely mostly on harnessing the support of the religious uh, sector, uh, the, uh, the Muslim religious leaders and religious sector. Because no matter what the media, the, the, the regular media will say, uh, the Muslim, as a Muslim, will never be influenced by just a, a, a reporter as to a person like a mufti or an ustad saying what is right and what is wrong. So uh, in general, sir, uh, we will be the, the, the best uh, messengers that we can really tap are the religious and the scholars, uh, the religious clerics are in the, in the, uh, in, uh, among the Muslims. And therefore, that will be the focus of the program. Uh, if I may just mention, sir, in countries which have studied like uh, Brunei, Malaysia, Indonesia, they have a ministry of relig uh, religious, they call it different names, but a, on, on Islam. And they even define what will be the message every Friday. Every Friday, sir, they have a standard message. Here, uh, the kutba, pare pare horian, sir, which promotes uh, moderation. Dito, sir, sa atin, unfortunately, uh, we don't have. Uh, we've been trying to influence the religious na to come up with that. Because ang nangyayari, sir, the, the means to spread extremism and uh, uh, violent, uh, yung, yung ideology ng ISIS is to the mosque, to the madrasas, and wala tayong control doon because wala tayong ganong problema, sir. So that which should be addressed. Uh, thank you, Alex. Now, uh, for my last comment, I address this to DOJ, to uh, Director Manarastas, and to CHR. Okay, uh, the tip of this spear is our surgical units. When you talk of terrorism, uh, that's the AP, PNP, NBI. That's not legally authorized some group. But that is applied only after we have prepared the ground. Now, the terrorists do not play by the rules. We continue to play by the rules because we want to continue occupying high moral and political ground. My submission uh, is a cap, no? Uh, Director Malastas, Attorney Asala, no? Is do, we, we should not burden our operating units, our other agencies, with a self-inflicted bureaucratic problem. We have been, your committee has been telling them always, your job is not to explain policy. Your job is to implement policy. They're parang news. You can explain who, what, when, where, why. It's up to the political leadership to explain. If there are any legal or constitutional issues, by the way, I raise these issues because that should apply to your submissions and comments to the proposed amendments to the HSA. Now, it is my view that that is why lawyers were invented, so that our operating units can focus on the mission, because time is of the essence. Any millisecond delay means life, liberty, and property will be threatened. I, I just put that at your table. Now, uh, Attorney Asalan, I directly communicated this to uh, uh, Chairman Gascon, no? And I will do this publicly again. 
uh, please request him not to waste too much time debating with the president on human rights issues. That is not, diba? Just focus on the job. Because bugbog sarado na tayo sa international community, now we're having problems. Uh, I'm not saying do not raise these issues. No? Uh, human rights is important. No? But uh, your job is really to work together as a team and address the moral issues. No, I, I put this at your doorstep para we can look at these amendments in the proper perspective because your committee is trying hard. Can you imagine after 11 years? Yeah, this is the time to, to address these issues now. Okay, I, I hope uh, we have been able to communicate this to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Nasan. <coughs> another topic, another uh, uh, proposed uh, amendment. Uh, hand in hand with an ex parte application, di ba? Merong preliminary asset preservation. This, in effect, is amending the uh, anti money laundering law, di ba? E effectively, by the way. Although, after that, after the asset preliminary asset preservation, mag apply pa rin yung provisions ng anti money laundering council. Ang tanong ko muna is, and I want to hear the view of uh, DOJ and, of course, HR. No? Ano magiging basis for uh, applying uh, for an ex parte uh, uh, order, judicial authorization to conduct surveillance? Anong threshold? Reasonable ground to believe that such a person or organization has committed? Ganun ba kababa ang threshold? What else can support that uh, phrase, reasonable ground to believe? To believe. Masyadong ano yun eh? Masyadong uh, unilateral and could be arbitrary. You know? Any person uh, can have reasonable ground to believe and he may be wrong. And uh, in that regard, na subject mo na yung tao sa uh, ex parte uh, uh, application to conduct surveillance. Yeah, first you and then CHR and then uh, DOJ. Uh, in one of our propositions on the amendment, uh, we indicated the uniqueness of this organization as a premise for making the proposal that uh, among the challenges that the security sector has, ha uh, has to confront is the fact that when a group of people appears in the Facebook and poses with firearms and mm. a black flag at the behind their, yeah. their photo with behind them and points to the yeah, yung kanilang ganun, sir, mm. uh, Allah uh, yeah. uh, flag, their allegiance to the ISIS. Would that uh, be a crime? Uh, that, that, that's the question. Would we ha the security sector have enough basis to arrest them? But while the law does not uh, allow us to plain uh, currently based on that. But the effect on the social media of people posing on that is actually encouraging more support, uh, propagating uh, the, the, the ideology, and uh, uh, recruiting, recruiting more uh, following to the ISIS uh, ideology. So that is the challenge. Sir. Uh, that's why when we submitted our proposal, uh, we also in included that support or help or expression of support yeah. be, be included as basis. Uh, and, and publications like that or text messages or uh, communicating through social media and uh, encouraging attacks be a basis for, for us to uh, presume that they are members or part of uh, the terrorist group. Alex, yes, before sir. you continue, no? Yes, sir. Uh, in a situation like that, where there is doubt, uh, in whose favor is the doubt resolved? Should be law enforcement. Uh, uh, correct, no? No. Parang uh, The people, sir. The people. Yeah. The protection of the people, sir. The safety and protection of the people. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to push this point, no? Dahil it should define our temperament. Let's say parang disaster, parang bagyo. I asked the question once, 
pag kailangan ni evacuate yung pamilya, yung pamilya na ayaw iwan yung mga baka at kalabaw at baboy, no? if you possibly evacuate them, will the law and the constitution back you up? I raise this point because in case of doubt, resolve it in favor of protection of life, liberty, and property. And I think the DOJ and our legal mechanism should support that objective. Uh, otherwise, pag may doubt and the doubt is not resolved properly, well, I think the best safeguard against uh, possible uh, no, arbitrariness and abuse, anti-terrorism council. Because remember, you cannot just apply unilaterally, di ba? You have to secure a written authorization from the anti-terrorism council. And they're clothed with enough information, di ba? They're armed with enough information to back whatever application you have, di ba? Kasi kung wala naman silang uh, data, Yung nga, nagpo sa Facebook, eh sa data ng Anti-Terrorism Council, of course, ikaw naman sekretariat, and upon your recommendation yung uh, pagbigay ng written authorization, di ba? So, kung wala namang enough uh, data to back whatever uh, suspicion the law enforcer on the ground has, hindi rin makakapag-apply, eh, di ba? So, I think that's the best safeguard against possible abuse. Mr. Chairman? As... Yes, Senator Soto. What is the, what about, uh, say, in other countries, in the United States? Um, what is their, um, what, is the, what is the law that covers that, or is it covered? Because I have a friend who was arrested about over a year ago, who lives in the United States, who had this picture in uh, Facebook with an HK and a silencer. He was arrested a few days after. Uh, ano ba sa kanila? So the, the creation of uh, the Department of Homeland Security in the U.S. actually answers everything. Uh, it has 22 agencies under it, including the immigration, customs, uh, because the 9-11 the was really a very serious lesson to them that uh, trampling the rights of uh, uh, people, if they would save thousands of lives, will actually be worth it. So the Homeland Security is the third largest uh, uh, department in the U.S., yet one of the most powerful because the, the former Counterterrorism Operation Center was already dissolved and in place was the, uh, domestic, the uh, Department of Homeland Security. And it is bestowed with a lot of powers that they can detain people even without warrant, even without court order, as long as it is related to terrorism. DOJ, do you think that will pass the test of constitutionality? Yung mere suspicion, reasonable ground to believe, pwede na mag-apply na may accompanying preliminary asset preservation. Meaning, if you press lahat yan, ha? walang transactions. Mr. Chair, I think, um, as I mentioned earlier, um, for this, the, the proposed bill has a specific purpose, special purpose for that sense. As, as mentioned earlier, in Asia, we are the weakest. So to address that, Mr. Chair, I think, uh, there's no violation of the Constitution as long as the other civil rights are still there. So I think the, the law does not actually uh, eliminate the civil rights of the person, but uh, the, it, it has just uh, evolved in a, a other aspect, uh, Mr. Chair. So I think there, there's no violation, and with the passage of this new law, we can uh, address the issues with that we are but talking. remember, on mere suspicion, hindi makatransak kasi merong preliminary asset preservation that's effectively freezing the asset. So, CHR, what do you say about that? I think, sir, a reasonable suspicion is not enough for the um, freezing of the... So, we, we should increase the threshold? Yes, sir, I think we should increase to the... what? Oh. Probable cost? Probable cost, sir, maybe. Pag probable cost, Necessarily, prosecutor na gano'n yan eh, level na ng DOJ yun. So, uh, how, how will you reconcile 
conducting surveillance with uh, establishing probable cause at the level of the prosecutor. Mawawala yung, uh, yung confidentiality, uh, ano, di ba? And doon ang sikreto ng pag-surveillance eh. Kasi kung kukuha ka ng uh, probable cause, necessarily magpapahal ka ng, magpapahal ka sa Department of Justice. Kasi sila nakakaalam ng threshold na yun eh. It's not in the, lev on the, le in the level of the law enforcement eh. Ang sa law enforcement talaga, ang kaya lang labutin yung reasonable ground to believe. And then, ang problema ko lang dito, yun nga, uh, naka, naka subject ka sa surveillance, tapos may preliminary asset preservation, that's 90 days, ha? Dulumpuhin mo yung tao, what if mali pala? And it's ex parte, ha? This is without the knowledge of the person. Pero of course, malalaman niya, kasi hindi siya makapag-transact sa banko, eh. Then he will be informed by his bank na merong order dito, ang court. So, hindi ba conflict din yun? Why, why don't you separate the two? No? Mas importante yung surveillance uh, aspect kesa doon sa asset preservation. Anyway, pagka naka-establish na kayo sufficient uh, evidence, pwede naman kayong uh, through the Money Laundering Act, Anti-Money Laundering Act, i-apply nyo lang doon. Huwag na natin isama rito. Kasi that will burn your whole operation. Di ba? Is that a sound suggestion? Sir, pwede pong balikan yung uh, why 90 days regarding the surveillance. Uh, I'll cite my uh, personal experience when we are uh, applying court orders for wiretaps. Uh, normally, sir, when the court issues the order, we coordinate with the telcos, and it takes a lot of time. And sometimes when it's already on the go, we have to request for another extension because lapse na sir yung 30 days. The critical period is the first application. Maybe we give the 90 days to the first application and then later on extendable to the okay. reasonable... Uh, that brings whatever. us to the ICT. How capable are you to respond to the needs of law, enforcer, of law enforcement? Sumusunod ba sa inyo yung telco o kayo sumusunod sa telco? Of course, gagawin nyo to through NTC, eh, di ba? Uh, that's correct, but sir. But if you are empowered by this legislation na kayo mismo hands-on uh, hands ang mag implement nito, then you'll be empowered. Uh, Kasi yes. tama si Secretary Anyo, ha? And experience din namin yan noong in my previous life. mag apply ka, ang tagal mag-react, tapos na yung ano, mo, period mo, mag apply ka para extension. So parang doble trabaho. Uh, anyway, sir, please respond. Yes, sir. I, uh, thank you for uh, Mr. Chairman. Sir, we will discuss this matter with the principal, with the NTC, and we will submit our position paper once uh, Secretary you signed it. For now, sir, I cannot uh, disclose further because, sir, uh, there's an NTC. Ano po? Akin kasi ang buhay nitong batas na to nandun sa surveillance eh. Nandiyan. Because, alam nyo, pag human, Misan may mga human factor na pumapasok. Misan binobola ka ng asset mo. Pero pag si Jint, ang ginamit mo, talaga accurate yan. Assuming na walang disinformation. Dahil hindi niya alam na sinosurveillance siya. That is the most potent weapon sa intelligence, di ba? Uh, signal intelligence or technical. Lex. If I may just react on the freezing of assets. Uh, I agree with the chair na kung pwede sir, uh, separate... Uh, but it should still be there because uh, in under, under, under the current the terrorist financing law, and we have to really freeze some assets, especially if they are involved in, in financing uh, terrorist groups. Uh, this should still be uh, a, pro a provision that can be resorted to by law enforcement if necessary. Uh, separate from the uh, surveillance because tama yan sa nisabi. Yeah, regardless kung separate o hindi, ang problema ko lang doon, yun nga, masusunog kayo eh, kasi once na pupunta sa bangko niya, tapos hindi siya makagalaw, sasabihin, siyempre, he has the right to know. 
Sabihin sa kanyang bangko, eh, may court order eh. Uh, for instance, our situation is na-arrest yung suspect, one suspect, and in the, in the investigation, siyempre sir, pagka nahuli, may network, sino yung, sino yung financier. Tuloy pa rin yung so, uh, technical. Oh sir, oh sir and so then identify. Okay. If, uh, because, unless, ma it will be used for operational purposes to arrest those people. But in the meantime, sir, kung hindi ma ma masatisfy ang law, there should be a one more option to just freeze the assets of the suspects. Uh, it's more or less, act actually, sir, parang almost after the, the, uh, the surveillance. Uh, Alex, just one question, no? but as I said, uh, you are definitely, no, no question about the competence, no? pero just a caveat about harnessing the power of technology. No? May mga bagay nung, nung panahon namin, nina June, nina Del, no? uh, technology is sometimes making patience obsolete. May mga bagay na hindi pwedeng delete, send, copy, paste, no? There are some things that you need to spend time on, especially with the point raised by the chairman, na that's used to validate or revalidate the products of a human. Pag trade craft, walang problema. Pa pabilisan niya, no? Pero to validate it, to spend time developing your action agents or your DPAs, it needs some patience. Just a put it on your table, no? Para you can, you can balance this out. Para these are inputs, as the chairman said, for the Anti-Terrorism Council, who, which will sort this out. Okay. Uh, I put that at your doorstep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yung sa 500,000 a day sa false prosecution, ang suggestion dito, ang proposal dito is to uh, leave it to the court, discretion of court, and it should not be less than 50,000. And government... Uh, in solidarity with law enforcement uh, officers, magsisolder nung, nung damages. No? Yeah, dapat lang. Uh, wag na natin ilagay yung, yes, we need to amend that particular provision because that's probably one of the reasons why law enforcement is so hesitant kasi pag nagkamali ka, instead of filing uh, violations ng uh, Human Security Act, file ko na lang to na murder. O pailan ko na lang ito ng ibang uh, uh, possession of explosives kesa terrorism. Kasi baka maakwit ito, balikan ako nito. E eh, 500 a day, e eh, kung isang taon na nakulong. You know, we were part of that uh, of the Congress, of the Senate that interpolated on that. I think it was Senator Pimentel at the time who introduced that particular uh, provision. Eh. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. Senate President. Um, again, uh, it was mentioned earlier by uh, Director General Monteagudo that in this part of the, re of, the of the world, tayo yung pinakamaliwag dyan, ano? And then in, in the Western world, yung United States na mga laws ang ideal dito sapagkat nadala na sila eh. Eh tayo, medyo dala na rin tayo eh sa nangyari sa Mindanao eh at saka sa mga possible na mangyayari dito. Why do we need this provision? The yes. No. In oh. fact, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Bakit? Uh, uh, Mr. Do, Mr. do they debt that in the United States are the Homeland Security Department um, uh, people uh, will pay a fine if they, ano, pagka nagkamali sila? There are proper courts to, to, for them to, uh, to go to. Ah. At saka, we're dealing here oh. with beyond reasonable doubt, ah, which is a very high threshold. Yes. Eh, kumakwit. <laughs> Paano ba yun, uh, DOJ, yung damages na binibigay sa false prosecution? When, do, oh, when or how do you prove false prosecution? Mr. Chair, um, for the cases in uh, filed in courts, if, if the accused is later on uh, acquitted uh, and he was detained, uh, he will be paid uh, corresponding for his, uh, the time that he has spent. Um, I, I will have to check with the uh, figures, Mr. Chair, as to how much is paid. With the permission of the Senate President, who still has the floor, 
kasi minsan na uh, didismiss technicality, guilty naman, pero kinulang lang doon sa beyond reasonable doubt. Mahirap i-prove yung beyond reasonable doubt eh. Eh, babayaran ng gobyerno yun, eh, guilty naman. And then, Mr. President, uh, Mr. Chairman, ano, uh, the fact na mayroong proper laws, may mga batas eh, na nasasakop yan eh. Like, for example, isang kinulong nyo, uh, ginakusahan, nakulong, pagkatapos, uh, not guilty pala, pwede naman siya manghabol sa gobyerno eh. There are pro proper laws to, that they can uh, use, di ba? Uh, oh, eh bakit that, why are we going to scare our enforcers? Tinatakot natin ang mga enforcer natin eh. Na, hindi, oh, babayad kayo. Pagka nagkamali kayo. Mabigat ko. Eh meron namang, ano eh, mga kasalo, eh, naangkop na, bat, na, na, na batas eh. Kaya, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, my suggestion is to remove this particular provision in the Human Security Act. Mr. Chair, uh, <coughs> We would like to agree with that. Uh, in the first place, uh, the provisions under Section 50 would say that it will be paid by the Anti-Terrorism Council or the agency to whom that personal personnel belongs. Are these budgeted? Can you predict, uh, predict uh, how many people will commit mistakes uh, so that they, we could pay, pay this uh, error fee? When in fact, as the Senate President has said, there are laws and administrative uh, provisions that could indeed punish the erring uh, perso personnel. So uh, we recommend that uh, we remove this uh, provision. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I may, um, under the DOJ, Your Honor, with the Board of Claims, um, as I we've checked it, um, the Board of Claims will pay 10,000 pesos to those who have been uh, acquitted, later on acquitted, Your, Your Honor. And in Board of Claims is under the OJ. No? Yes, Your Honor. So uh, may, may funding para dyan talaga. Yeah, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, yes. if, we, if, if we take the U.S. Uh, laws, anybody who is wrongfully accused and put to jail, they can actually sue the government. Ano gabi natin? Tama yung sanabi ni Senator uh, Soto. It, it, it is a separate, separate case na yun. Kung they feel that they were wrongfully put to jail, then they can sue so the government. The government should answer, hindi yung, yung agencies na nakahuli. Yes, sir. 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 Uh, Mr. Chair, can I go back to the... Uh, uh, the, the Papua the Asset Preservation Order. Uh, as to, if you go back to the Republic Act uh, number 10168, as mentioned earlier by Delica, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, um, the, the one who will determine, your, uh, Mr. Chair, as to the, or, or the, or the authority to freeze the accounts, Mr. Chair, is the um, AMLAC, Mr. Chair. And the basis, Mr. Chair, is probable cost. So, maybe from that, as, as I agree with the proposal earlier to make it separate and just to refer to the, the, the law as to that matter is the Financing on Terrorism Act. Yes, Ed. Uh, sir, in the proposed bill, uh, there's a provision that in case of an actual or reasonable belief, of imminent terrorist attack, the ATC may file an ex parte application before the CA or RTC to instruct the DIE uh, city to compel telecoms and internet services pro service providers to produce all customers' information and calls and text data records of any person suspected of terrorist attacks. While we support the foregoing provision, the composition to produce all information should also include the media. Because we believe that... Uh, say, say that again. Ed. Include the media, because media also has information that can be uh, summoned by the DICT if it would help the uh, prevent of an imminent attack. After what, all... What yes, will you need from the media? What kind of information? Uh, beca because uh, the media has lots of information. For example, uh, Sometimes uh, the media <laughs> the media conducts interview 
uh, or sometimes they have also other sources. If there's an imminent attack, I think uh, we can we can ask the media to also provide the information. The Senate President will explain the provisions of the Soto law. <laughs> that his grandfather uh, uh, passed. Yes, it is now the Soto the third law because uh, we have already amended it to include the broadcast radio and TV. The original press freedom law only covered the uh, journalists, print uh, media, but now we have already um, uh, amended it to include the broadcast and uh, uh, the television and uh, radio. But there is an exemption. If it involves national security, they cannot claim, uh, uh, they cannot bank on the, the, the law, on the so-called social law, press freedom law. As long as it involves national security, they have to divulge. Yeah. To include the compulsory sending of advisory to the public uh, to announce the imminent danger so that uh, people can, uh, can, can, can also participate and uh, provide information. Like, for example, said in the in, in, in U.S., uh, every, every almost every five minutes, uh, like, like, for example, during the Boston uh, uh, bombing, uh, within, within the day, they are able to solve the, uh, the, uh, the case because Every five minutes, uh, it was uh, a sort of uh, compulsory advisory to the media. So maybe we can... Uh, Actually, Ed, na-incorporate na namin doon sa mga franchise laws that we have passed, ano? 10% uh, of yung lahat ng mga paid commercials nila should be dedicated to government, uh, ano? Meron yan doon, nakaprovide na yun doon. So, kung ang kanilang total number of uh, minutes or hours in a day, eh, halimbawa, 100 uh, minutes, 10% of that will be dedicated para sa gobyerno, mga announcements that you were referring to. Yes, uh, Chief of Staff. Sir, sir can, we, can we call back, sir, sir pertaining uh, our, because uh, the security forces always request for special courts and special detentions for terrorism. So the, our problem is uh, if we have uh, uh, detained, uh, detained the, uh, the, ter the terrorists, we have two, two problems that, uh, that uh, will, will, uh, will, uh, will uh, prop up. One, sir, is uh, the, the security, for example, in Basilan, kung doon po sila nahuli, doon natin detained, Majority po na nanahuli po natin, nakakawala rin po dahil because of the security. At the same time, uh, there, is a, there is a pressure sa mga, ano sir, mga tatawag natin mga uh, sa courts na itatreaten di po sila ng, ano sir, ng mga family ng mga, ng mga terrorist. So with that, we are recommending sir na kung, kung po pwede sir, mayroong special courts para sir yung, ano, yung, yung talagang pagkanahuli natin, uh, lalo, na, lalo na dali natin sa Manila kagad, kasi para nahuli natin, at least para neutralize natin kaagad yung, ano, yung, especially yung mga HBI, yung high value targets, uh, high value individuals. There are many instances na lahat ng ano sir namin, yung may mga, ano po kami, dito sa, Sam sa Sambuanga and also dito sa Basilan, many ano sir na, pati hanggang doon sir, sa Coronadal, marami po nangyayari na yung mga suspects natin sa drugs at saka po sa uh, mga bombers, nakakawala po dahil kasi they, they were bol being bolt out by their, their comrades. Uh, sa Basilan po, we have already two, two instances of uh, escape uh, being bolted by, you know, by the attack of the ASG. Uh, secondly, sir, secondly, sir, during the Marawi, you know, Marawi seeds, we have accounted more than 300 uh, balik Islams. Balik Islam na, 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 ano po, na, na neutralized natin. And if you look at the history of ISIS, si, si, uh, uh, si, si Sarkawi, sir, si Sarkawi, nag-permeate nag, uh, ang ISIS is from the, you know, from the cells, cells. Sa ano po yan, sa kung, kung makita po natin ng ISIS, nag-propagate po yan sa mga cells. And kung titignan natin, kung, kung hindi po natin... Prison, prison cells, sir. Prison cells. Prison cells. So kung makita po natin, ganun po ang nangyayari kay Ahmad Santos. Uh, marami po siyang na, nakukumbinsi na karamihan, yung napatay namin sa, ano, yung napatay namin sa, sa, ano po, sa Marawi, it came from the cells of uh, Ahmad Santos, Balik Islam. And the Balik Islam is more, uh, no, more, uh, sir, more uh, violent 
they are more violent and they are more ano, more more pervasive. In fact, yung sa ano, sir, sa Quiapo, ang nagaro po diyan is yan po sir, uh, yung isang napatay na po sa sa Marawi. Na kun talagang ano po, uh, siya po yung nagaro sa ano lang ng uh, Quiapo bombing, lone lone wolf. So if we will answer, if we will request para at least mano natin, manutralize natin especially mga HBI, we will recommend for special courts for for terrorists. And second, yung special detention po niya sir, uh, gawin po natin na katulad ng ginawa po na manutralize na 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 nanutralize ng Singapore, Malaysia at uh, Indonesia na meron po silang tinatawag na religious rehabilitation group na for every recidivist o itinatawag natin hard no hard no hard uh, hard ano, hard, uh, tawag natin uh, hardcore, uh, meron pong isang uh, imam or tinatawag natin mga, mga religious na may murder mga mufti and then isang uh, civil, civil, civil worker and isang isang case officer. So they are working not only for the, you know, for the, for the, for the individual, ano, individual uh, uh, terrorists but also to the family. The pressure now has become, ano, so ang nangyayari sir, Instead na no, instead na makabalik nang bumalik siya sa ano sa pagkano sir. Uh, there are more 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 or less 500 cases yung Malaysia. Na yung 500 ng mga recidivist nila sir, hindi na nag, nagbalik sa ano sir sa kaya na lose sa ng JI because yung ano yung network sir ng ng JI nakuha na nila because the families are the one helping them to ano to neutralize the ano sir. So long long ano long long term effect sir ng sir yung sinasabi nga sir ni ni Sir Tom Ronasan, the battles of the minds and the hearts also doon po nag-start sa cells. So, yun po ang recommendation po namin na, na, na there should be a special court and there should be a special cell na kasama yung isang civil service, civil service, uh, civil, uh, social service uh, worker, one case officer, intelligence court case officer, at saka po isang, ano, isang, isang pare or isang, ano, sir, isang, uh, isang imam. So that this history will work for the total rehabilitation and it will cut the generational ano uh, uh, generational ano ng, 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 ng violence and terrorism that's the only way that we can ano, we can really cut the generational link of terrorism wherein yung home family kasi pagka once po we killed one terrorist the other families will no, will sprout or yung tawag nating multi-headed snake but if you know from the lessons learned of the JI in Malaysia Indonesia there is there is an RGG re rehabilitation uh, religious group that is working closely with government that sila po ang nagano they empty yung ano yung uh, yung ideology nila and then they put yung talagang through through faith ano through faith healing sa kanilang ano po so yun po ang inano po namin na special court so that we can ano we can uh, prosecute at the same time special tension in order to neutralize yung ideology uh, Charlie mabuti binanggit mo yan I was going to raise the issue no that's one dimension. The other dimension is not only from the experience of the Me Mexican and Colombian drug cartels. No? San ba nagkita-kita itong mga ito? Sa natuto ng revolutionary taxation at extortion, yung revolutionary groups. At sa natuto ng mass organization, yung drug syndicate. Okay. Open, di ba? I don't know if it's being addressed already. Yung headquarters ng drug syndicate, magugula tayo. Nasa loob ng kulungan. That's the most secure May, may gwardiya ka, may cellphone ka lang. Okay? Diyan sila nag-exchange, transfer of technology. That's why, not only special courts, not only special detention facilities, but you must separate them pa para hindi magka-influensya. That's a very dangerous combination. As uh, from our experience in Marawi, pag ginaghalo mo yung terrorism at saka drugs, which to them is not a vice but a weapon, you have a very potent uh, combination. Yeah. No. Mr. Chair. Yes, John. Talking about uh, prison, pri prisons as the uh, big venue for countering uh, violent extremism. In our workshops for the preventing and countering violent ex extremism, we have data to, uh, pointing out that our jails are really as we know it, uh, overcrowded. So you put in uh, five people there who are terrorists, and in, in a short while they will they will be able to recruit as many as uh, they could. So really, that is one of the main reasons why we are putting the PCVE tasks to the DILG. 
simply because it has it has the supervision of a BJMP and it has there the uh, bureau, uh, also the Bureau of Corrections. Uh, dapat hindi na sa ano yan. Uh, I don't know where we, we should put that, uh, whether Bureau of Corrections, should that be with DOJ or with uh, our uh, prisons uh, system? Uh, yung mga Bureau of Corrections uh, is supposed to be for those who are already convicted. Uh, but uh, how about those that are not yet convicted? Where do you put them? Uh, in the provincial jails? In, the, in all those prisons? But just the same, uh, Your Honor, talagang masyado tayong congested sa mga jails natin. It becomes very, very uh, conducive to, to recruitments. Thank you. Yeah. Sir, I, I really recommend that there is a separate cell. Uh, kasi sir, ngayon, katulad sa sami sa ISAP, meron kaming high-profile na, ano sir, high-profile na individual. Na ibabalik namin sir yun, eh. Uh, kung magkasano sir, nakuha namin halos yung uh, cell ng Basilan because of him. At saka sir, yung, uh, yung mga ibang hindi namin nakikita. So, because of the rehabilitation that we have done, because we have a committee that is called paid program, the family, sir, we give them a livelihood. At the same time, the regional government is really giving houses to them. Our recommendation is really to leave, sir. Because if we have a common crime, there is a possibility that the common criminals will become a criminal. Will become an uh, terrorist. And mas mas delicado po yun sir, kasi mas ano sir, mas ano sir, pervasive and mas violent because they have already the experience. Se secondly, sir, ang ano sir namin sir is a uh, sir sabi na natin na where, where is the battle of, of hearts and minds? It is in the madrasa. It is in the ano in the in the in the mosque. Kaya sir, may meron tayong dapat sir na mga tinatawag na institution. For example, uh, ang madrasa sir dapat yano nang deped. It's also propagating dun sa ano sir sa communists. They're also doing that. Yung tinatawag nating yun o yung salukungan at cakay yung alkadeb, which is nakuha nila na na ano yun na na lessons learned nila sa mga madrasa at cakasa present turns. If you look di ano di di history of al Qaeda, bago sila bago sila kunyari kung sampo from Philippines, merong merong silang tinatawag nating ano sir from 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 nationalist, Muslim nationalist to extremist. Merong po yung pinupuntahan. And the last na pupuntahan nila, sir, is Afghanistan. Afghanistan established 6,000 present turns to, to, to produce fighters for Afghanistan. So, yun po ang, ano, yun po ang naman po natin na dapat yung, yung mga madrasas, meron po tayong control. Meaning, uh, meron tayong tinatawag na regulation wherein it should be institutionalized by the DepEd. Kasi pagka once po na, 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 na ang madrasa po uncontrolled, uh, anybody can, uh, can teach there. Ang mahira po, sir, pagka yung kutba, hindi regulated, Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the normal, ano, the normal uh, Muslim ano, uh, youth will take it as a, as, ano, sir, as a divine, ano, sir, talaga. Lalo na po kung yung, ano, yung nag, uh, nag, ano, nag, uh, nag, ano, putba came from abroad. Came, came from abroad. So, we, we recommend, sir, na there should be a, ano, a, a, a regulation on the madrasa. The Indonesian made it, uh, tinatawag nila, is moderation of madrasas. Moderation of madrasas. And then also, uh, uh, sa ARMM po, meron po tayo tinatawag na Grand Mufti. The Grand Mufti of the ARMM, sila po ang nagaano ng fatwa. Pagka sinabi po ang fatwa, yung fatwa is the state, state uh, tinatawag religious declaration. If they have a fatwa, doon po sa, sa, ano, sa ISIS, the LGU, Muslim LGU, is honor bound and even religiously bound to, ano, to, to declare that they will fight against ISIS. Yung po ang nangyari po sa, ano, sa, sa Marawi, we, in order to contain yung Marawi, the, the, 41, the 41 mayors and all the you know, sultanates and the, you know, the, the, you know, the, the ulama council declared patwa against ISIS and Maute. That's why yung po nakontain po namin talaga yung ano, because of that strong, strong, ano, strong declaration because they are religiously bound to obey that. Kaya kung magkakaroon po tayo ng Grand Mufti National, and also different uh, Mufti, ano, sir, makukontrol po natin. Ang medyo problema po, po natin ngayon, sir, the regional government, doon sa Muslim Mindanao, we can control. How about yung mga Muslim, sir, na nandito po sa, ano, sa Baguio, nandito po sa, sa Rizal, nandito po sa, ano, sir, they are uncontrolled. So, yun po ang inano po ng mga, ano, yung mga, even the ulamas, they are re requesting that should be, there is a, a national Grand Mufti. So that, 
the hutba during Fridays will be controlled para po ano yung CBCP pastoral uh, ano po sir. Yung po ang magiging ano uh, sir natin po. Before I recognize uh, Nika, actually it's in section 48 ano, yung promoting peace and inclusivity in schools, learning centers, and training institutions. So part of your narration uh, has been covered under this new provision, actually amendment ito ng uh, 9372. Nika? Yeah, the uh, chair uh, on uh, just on the surveillance of communications here in Australia, ang uh, nakalagay sa kanila, in case of an actual or reasonable ground of terrorist attack, the Minister of Communication and the Attorney General may issue subpoena to Telco to provide provide the call data records, historical call data of of suspects. So, may subpoena power, sir, yung uh, minister at saka yung attorney general. Uh, Doon sa ating Senate Bill 1956, sir, in the actual or reasonable belief of imminent danger, the ATC may file an ex parte application with the CA or RTC for a directive to instruct the DICT to compel Telco to provide uh, customer info as well as call data records. Just, just for information, sir. Then I'd like to raise one major concern, sir, of the ATC. Uh, there, were, there is a provision in the proposed bill for creation of a commission. Uh, instead of a council, we're proposing yes, that sir. we instead create a commission. Yes, sir. No, with the executive secretary as still the chairman. Yes, sir. And the seven members will be appointed by the president. Yes, sir. Kasi pagka yung by virtual position, di ba, automatic eh. Kung sino yung DOJ, siya yung yes, vice sir. chairman. Tapos, uh, anyway, the president can appoint any member of the cabinet then. Or, on a full-time basis, <coughs> yung mga members ng anti-terrorism uh, instead of council, commission. Yes, sir. Uh, What's your view on that? With all due respect, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we express our reservation on the commission. Uh, uh, ideally, sir, para lang mag full time, maganda, look, sir. Ideally, we invited the uh, DOJ, yes, sir. Uh, yung ASEC nandito, yes, sir. we invited, uh, sino ba ba? Uh, yeah. But uh, on, on the other hand, sir, while ideally, ganun, sir, we also are realistic about the culture of the Filipino na ayaw magpautos ng ating mga secretaries. Uh, ng basta-basta. Kaya, sir, doon sa ATC, sila na mismo yung member. So, sila but na rin Remember, the chairman is still the executive secretary. Yes, yeah. But they are also the implementers doon sa proposed namin na uh, uh, reprogramming of the functions. Kagaya nung... Pero policy direction lang yung council, eh, di ba? Yes, sir. More on policy. Uh, yes, sir. And then the... Uh, 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 pati yung policy has the same pro course, program, uh, sir. May programs. But we are the planners, uh, implementers... The the law itself uh, says that we must uh, promulgate plans and programs, so medyo... Yes, sir. So what we are doing now is to make the... Sir, example, the my concern, sir. The NB will be in charge of... Uh, uh, con may task allocation. Yes, sir. Task allocation. Uh, that will so be the difference, sir. That will be the difference. PCBE, DILG, but under him will be the DepEd, DepEd or whoever is in charge of uh, countering uh, violent extremism. So. OPRs na para, oh, ano yan? Uh, ikaw ang counteraction. So, doon ang turo namin. Not, uh, PNP has other, ano. Ang, ang reason lang naman, the joint operations, uh, ang reason lang naman namin dito, kaya gusto namin council, para full time, kasi more often than not, napaka-busy ng mga secretary, so pinapadala puro rep. Yung mga rapist nila, lagi nandun. <laughs> so, and then uh, papa brief be briefing pa pagdating sana. Eh eh iba si ano kasi baby niya ito eh. Pero I'm sure sina Del, sina Ed hindi rin maka-attend uh, religiously sa mga uh, council meetings because they have lots of problems to attend to. We understand anyway, that Mr. Chair but uh, creating another full-time office might be might entail us uh, some expenses and uh, it could, it could really pinpoint uh, the responsibility to specific persons, but 
what we are doing now is so you find it more effective <laughs> kung ipiritain the council yeah. under present uh, membership and assign or uh, OPRs yeah. for every specific Last allocation Last okay allocation okay no no problem no issue Rick you want to contribute to something to humanity Okay. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to go back to the suggestion of the AFP for the special courts. Um, uh, as based on the cases that we filed for ter uh, in relation to the Marawi siege, all of the cases were transferred to Taguig. So first it was transferred to Cagayan de Oro, then it was transferred to Cebu, and later on it was transferred in Manila. And as I mentioned earlier, we have already a task force on anti-terrorism. So the special prosecutors are already there to, to handle terrorism cases. Case to case, you will have to apply to the courts, right? Eh, yeah, yes. To transfer venue. Yes, Mr. Chair. That's why... The suggestion of AFP is to incorporate the law to create a special court solely for violations of the Anti-Terrorist Act. Y yes, Mr. Chair. I, I humbly agree with the proposal, Mr. Chair, because but from experience, as we experienced during the Marawi siege, we later on we, we transferred everything to in Manila for security reasons. So I think that would also be the grounds later on if if we implement this law in the region, but later on it will be transferred in Metro Manila. So I agree with the proposal, Mr. Chair. Pa. Ibuos yun na, hindi na ako tatawag susunod na hearing. I-co-committee report ko na ito para mabilis. Anyway, we'll just await the submission of position papers ano, to formalize your uh, respective positions, including si HR. Ano. And we're glad that you understand the predicament of law enforcers. Ano. Kasi mahirap din talaga ang trabaho nila. Eh. Ang daming restraints. Uh, nangingilan sila ng konting flexibility ba? But of course, primordial pa rin yung human rights, di ba? Ah, yes. Kaba yung DI? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, good day po. Sir, uh, I just want to go back to the question of Senator Honasan a while ago regarding the classification of terrorists. Because we need to consider that uh, as been said earlier, it is only the ESG that was prescribed to be terrorist. And please take note that in the uh, domestic uh, arena, there are so many terrorist groups that surfaced already based on uh, ISIS-inspired, allegedly, or, uh, groups or organizations. Because of this, sir, we do not know that there will be more uh, organizations that will be coming up later on and we are talking here that uh, membership and members of proscribed by the court and those organizations that were already branded by the United Nations as terrorists so I suggest sir that the law must classify terrorists based as what you had said a while ago on the acts itself and the intent, whoever they are, who, whoever organization they belong. Uh, that's all, sir. Aside from ASG, and of course, yung, uh, yung naka-apply ngayon sa CPP and PA uh, NDF, meron pa ba kayong in-apply, without mentioning uh, what those organizations are, ano? meron pa ba naka-apply na for prescription, wala na? Saka ano yung status nung sa CPP and PA? Naka, naka, withdraw ba ito? Suspended or what? Uh, ongoing, sir. Uh, ongoing. It's with the prosecutor of the DOJ, sir. We are working with the prosecutor. Yeah, pero medyo matagal na yan. Yes, may, sir. That's the problem with the prescription. May mga, may mga pleadings naman yan, di ba, na nasubmit? Yes, sir. Para medyo matagal. The na. Abu Sayyaf uh, experience, sir, uh, it took us more than 10 years to prescribe. Them. 10 years? Yes, sir. That's why... Uh, Supposedly, uh, so right know, after the passage of uh, the Human Security Act, yes nag-apply na kayo ng prescription? Yes, sir. Tapos kailan lang lumabas, sir? Ah, ganun ba katagal yun? Kaya, sir, uh, we are 
trying to learn from that experience uh, that this other application for proscription will be faster. So, medyo tumatak mo naman, sir. Dapat mabili, sir, kasi... Well, siguro pwede natin lagyan ng, ano, baka ng pwede, sir, kasi timeline natin. Yes, sir, dahil uh, if that is how long it takes, sir, yeah. uh, this is crisis situation, sir, eh, uh, yes. critical management. Siguro pwede naman sama uh, sa, sa measure, gawing time-bound. Yes, sir. Yung uh, whether or not i-approve uh, i or i-disapprove, i-reject, at least time-bound, yes, di ba? Sir. The Indonesians uh, only took them a few months to... Ano, sir, yung JAD, yung new group sa Indonesia, sir, when it came out a few months later, uh, may naglabas na sila ng uh, law. And uh, <coughs> one more, sir. Okay. Uh, last point, sir, from the ATC. Uh, with regard to the uh, PMC, there is, the, uh, we remember, uh, the prog with the due respect to the PMC, na i-create as a new office. Kasi, sir, this is based on the yung uh, mentioned by Senator Hanasan that during the previous administration, kaya hindi gumagalaw sir yung ATC because it was PMC that seemed to be moving around as if he carried the whole burden of the pro program management center of the ATC. ATC, sir. It was created management center. Center under, under ATC. ATC. Created during the Aquino administration. Now, it's the NICA that serves as the secretariat. It has always been the secretariat, sir. But during the administration of Aquino, yeah. they created the PMC because uh, hindi daw sila comfortable with the director of NICA at the time. Uh, so, may mga ganun, sir. So, they created the PMC. Tapos kaya hindi nag yung ATC, sir. Because they empowered the PMC to do everything. And that was the... I th we believe, sir, the failure because by giving it to the PMC, walang power yung PMC, sir. Uh, so, ngayon, sir, in the proposal, ganun uli, na-include uli yon, and we are... Take note of that. Yes, sir, Mabuti, na, kinagap mo. na dapat, sir, kung ano yung ATC, as is, sir, i-retain siya, but with the task allocation now and empowering this, the ATC to to organize this task allocation, the ABAWA, the ALG, ilagay yung DepEd, lap, yung mga Muslim, ano, uh, mababago na sir ngayon yung function ng ATC. There will be operational, but it will be more effective if the secretary or the, or, or the USEC, which we propose. Alex, suggest that you include that in your position we paper. We submitted, sir. Yes, sir. Nasubmit nyo na? Yes, sir. Yeah, you will submit? Yes, sir. Well, you already submitted, sir. You already submitted? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll, t we'll take note of that. Yes, sir. Thank Sige, you, sir. Uh, Greg. Yes, sir, Chair. Uh, in addition, uh, we take note that terrorism is already a global concern and our foreign counterparts are uh, wanted to work with us and they really wanted to join us on this uh, endeavor. However, they are confused on what you need to directly get engaged. So what happened is they, they engage uh, in so many units, and so this be in control. Uh, I suggest that there should be a specific point wherein foreign uh, support or count counterparts involved in terrorism activities should have a direction, sir. Thank you, sir. Anything more? So, is that? On that note, maraming salamat sa inyo lahat and uh, we'll pass back the passage of this measure. I just hope that you follow it up also do sa house. Uh, ano ba status sa house? Ano status na doon? TWG? Nag-TWG para lang sa, pa lang sa drafting of the yes, bill. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, Doon pa lang, Sige. sir. Yes, sir. Sino ba to? Si, si Mr. Akop o si, si Mr. Espino? Si uh, 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 Congressman Akop ang, ano, sir, okay. ang proponent. Anyway, But sa uh, committee ni Biason yata, sir. Okay. Sige. TWG. Oh. So, the hearing is suspended and uh, we'll just notify you if there's a need for another hearing. But... Uh, I, I can see that there will be no more need for another hearing. So again, maraming salamat sa, la, sa inyo lahat.